Coming up on today's wrestling news, Tony Khan on MJF and Britt Baker's AEW Futures. A WWE exit has been revealed. TNA talent protests Scott Demore's firing in a letter to their bosses. And there is a rumour killer on an AEW departure. I'm Michael Amphlett. I'm Michael Sidgwick. And this, Sidge, is the news. This, imagine that. We're going to start with All Elite Wrestling. Tony Khan has been on speaking about two of the more notable absentees on their Dynamite and Collision at the moment, Britt Baker and MJF. Obviously, they've been off screen for a while now. And uh, he's provided updates of sorts in the way that only Tony Khan can. Yes, he said the word great three <laughs> times in one sentence. He was there. Uh, God love him. He was speaking to uh, Sports Grid uh, and he was asked a couple of questions about both of them. On MJF, he said, quote, it's something to keep an eye on with MJF. He's a great wrestler for AEW and has been a great world champion. He was very injured and I would love to have MJF back anytime and we'll see what happens here. Whereas on Britt Baker, he added, Britt Baker's been out. She was injured, and there's a lot of times we have a lot of great wrestlers out injured. So I think this year will be great, and not only for the great free agents, but also for some stars that have been sidelined coming back. Yes, that's very Tony Khan coded, but on this, um, I suppose at the moment he's trying to do two things with MJF. Obviously reference the fact that he was working incredibly hurt yes. by the end of 2023, but he is being mindful that I guess he's got to keep elements of the war of 2024 alive yeah. as MJF remains off television. Britt Baker's slightly different. Um, she, he's met, this is the second time he's mentioned he's she's carrying an injury after noting that she was on an injured list in the World's End press conference. But this does sort of slightly, um, doesn't contradict, but it collides with uh, some tweets that Britt Baker put up towards the end of 2023. Mm. She was last featured all the way back in September on Collision and then hasn't been on television ever since and has made a few noises about not being on. It does appear that she's hurt, so if she was working, she'd be working with an injury. But yeah, um, like I said, really notable uh, by their absence in both cases. MJF, we kind of understand, but Baker especially. A bit weird. Yeah, um, well, I've got more to say, I think, on the Baker situation and broadly in general on wrestling's lack of transparency mm. with injuries because I just think that there's absolutely no point. I do not see the point in WWE and AEW are both guilty of this. I'm just not really disclosing what specifically is wrong with the wrestler, if they are indeed injured, how long they are expected to be out. We see it in normal sports all of the time. Yes, I understand to a degree you might be wary that I could indict the company as, you know, unsafe or whatever if in if in fact there's like a massive spate of injuries but we can kind of connect the dots to begin with and it would just be nice to know right okay this wrestler x has incurred injury x they are out for x amount of time because when you don't do that all you really do and again this is bubble stuff so maybe it doesn't matter too much but all you do realistically is fuel uh, conspiracy theories and narratives about who might not be happy in the company yeah. and all the rest of it. And I just think if you just clarify it, then you get rid of the noise. And the extent to which we should care about the noise, probably minimal, but it gets it could just gets really annoying. Um, and you just don't know half of what's going on. And I just think it would be nice if wrestling was very transparent about, one, its injury record, that being the tip of the iceberg and virtually everything else. I don't know why they continue to play these shadowy games. I just think that on a broader level, it does really dent trust in the company. And it just, it, for me personally, maybe for you, when they're very shadowy and they play these games and they don't reveal a lot of things, I just get really annoyed. It's a very carny mentality and I think we need to move past it. One of many old habits that needs to die hard in 2024. Yes, isn't it? indeed. Like, it just indeed. feels so dated Yep, and past it, yeah. Um, yeah, so Baker and uh, MJF not uh, going to be back in AEW anytime soon. But... No, it doesn't look like it, but it's a shame because I think Britt Baker and Tony Storm, if you could get this version of yeah. Tony Storm right, and 2020, 2021 vintage, really funny Britt Baker in a program, I think money could be made. Away from AEW momentarily, over to WWE. There has been a release from the creative writing staff as revealed by PW Insider. Jennifer Pepperman, let me just check my notes, <laughs> um, has um, voluntarily left her position as a creative writer. Um, Adam Pierce has paid tribute to her passion and hard work on X slash Twitter. And um, she was apparently credited for her input most recently with that SmackDown women's division, which to be brutally honest, wasn't exactly getting garnering rave reviews. Um, it's one of these weird ones, right? In previous times, um, and Vince McMahon was still at the helm, 
particularly towards the end of his run. There was always the take, and various other former WWE creative writers have corroborated this, that they just basically kind of very quickly understood what the remit was, what they had to do in order to survive in those trenches, and just write towards his whims and write for the audience of one. That's kind of different now, I suppose, but we don't really know. And I think one of the problems is that when you are not sort of, um, you know, guild affiliated, you just don't know. There are no credits at the no. end of WWE TV shows. You've kind of got no idea really who does what um, and when and how much input they seriously have, how much agency, how much of their actual, actual talent is on display, how much just goes through Levesque. So I don't really know what to make of this news other than I guess we can, you know, wish her well in the next venture. It's a seven year, she had a seven year run with the company and obviously we hear a lot about how there are so few um, women's voices in that room and in yes. that bit of the process especially. Um, so it's a, probably a difficult one for WWE to have to address um, with regards to the creative on the women's division. There's no news yet on who's going to replace yeah. in that specific role. To your point about um, SmackDown and what it looked like, yeah, it's it's one thing to say, well, like, why were the women's storylines not better if they've actually got women creative? But as you point out, what if it just hits a log jam with just whoever's, don't know. whoever's got the red pen at the end of it? There are no credits, so we've got really no way of knowing. It was something we felt like we knew under Vince McMahon. It was just him. For better and much, much worse. Much, much, much worse. But now, obviously, it's not something we're still aware of. I think, like, that credits is a, is a really key point to this. Like, WWE wants to be... Television one day and then sport the next. There'll always be wrestling, carny wrestling. Yeah, down. it's like, true. It's true. It's a slightly nicer story about um, talent, I guess, people within the company wanting to work towards one common goal. Coming out of TNA, the ructions continue following Scott Demore's surprising and now yeah. seemingly controversial um, firing as TNA president by Anthem Media and Entertainment. Um, the latest twist in the tale is that. Uh, Anthem have been given a letter, served a letter that is all talent have co-signed basically. It's a long, length, uh, long lengthy letter that you can read on our website. It was originally uh, reported by Fightful Select where they've shared the letter. And it goes into humongous detail about not just um, like obviously the, the talent's feelings about Scott Demore's exit, but what exactly Scott Demore did pretty much in every aspect of the job. Um, you know, just for those that are unaware, Anthem Sports and Entertainment Media replaced Scott Demore um, with Anthony Ciccone, who's one of their television executives. And the talent throughout the letter are basically trying to put across just how important a wrestling person is and how unique it is to have this role in wrestling in terms of your like talent, re talent relations, promos, advice on matches, like emotional support from somebody that's been in the business and yeah. kind of understands the gears of how it works. It's not just from a creative point of view there. Some of the some of the phrasing they used was they wanted the return of Scott DeMott as the quote wrestling person to quote protect the present and future of TNA slash impact for you, for Anthem, for the fans and professional wrestlers. There are lengthy passages on the various aspects of why they'd like him to come back. They do know that they, you know, there's always a lot of rumors and speculation within wrestling and they don't know all the facts of it. They welcome dialogue with yeah. Anthem to sit down together and when they talk about who should really be in the job they return to it being Scott Tamore and can they kind of like come back together on it it's all very balanced and un-wrestler like in them coming together around this one common cause so we'll see how it plays out yeah we'll have to see how that one plays out I suppose yeah rumours that you always see on social media notwithstanding about the more mm. he was obviously incredibly popular within that locker room um, it's always the uncertainty when in professional wrestling which you must understand is a very insular and paranoid environment when outsiders come into it that naturally gets their backs up um, and if you're a pro wrestler and you've got like you know even a surface level of modern US wrestling history you're going to get wary of all those horror stories from WCW mm -hmm. of people who were not familiar with the the inner workings of the industry who were installed in executive positions and almost invariably failed spectacularly so I can see where the locker room is coming from on this now to our final story before we get to your Twitter questions um, I think a lot of AEW fans had that collective Denzel Washington meme moment. <laughs> because it was noticed, and who knows these things, I don't know, I know. that um, sort of on off talent, Yuka Zakasaki, who's mostly operated within TJP, um, was removed from the All Elite Wrestling roster page. That sparked a lot of, um, you know, 
concern amongst AEW fans because she's such an unforgettable, charming professional wrestler who's made such an unbelievable lasting impression on those AEW fans, or at least the very, very hardcores. We've seen countless wrestlers do sort of, I guess, cameo runs mm -hmm. where they've appeared a handful of times, maybe a little bit more than that, who've sort of been gone, no one really remembers them that fondly. Like, people are manifesting Yuka Sakazaki having a huge run in AEW. It felt for a while as well, like that was actually the working plan. It just took a little bit of time to get there with the obligations to finish over in Japan. And then she suddenly reappeared back on the roster page. So we are hoping, at least I'm hoping, I think Yuka Sakazaki is absolutely tremendous as a talent. That it was some kind of bizarre website glitch. Absolutely nothing for anyone to worry about. Yeah. Fingers crossed, no matches in 2024 for Yuka yet. And the last thing she did with, well, not even with AEW, but I guess under Tony Khan's stewardship was a Ring of Honor title loss against Athena last yeah. March. Um, she's been out of contention there for quite a while. She just gets over everywhere. Yeah. She's That's just it. such a charming pro wrestler. I once compared it, I once said she was the Anya Stark of professional wrestling. <laughs> like that juxtaposition between the, the, the aesthetic and the size and what she can do in that ring just always grabs me every single time. I think that's it, isn't it? When you when you have so little opportunity to actually make your mark and then you still do it anyway. People still want Yuka Sakazaki versus Riho paid off. Well, and I know, it's a bit of a, I know it's a bit of a meme. Like, why did she push her and all the rest of it? Yeah. It is a bit of a meme. People would still really want to see that paid off. I don't think you'd have any panic about her status on the roster page without that. Which yeah, is, that's, no. that's the kind of Absolutely. impact she's left. Um, and uh, <laughs> Sige, if uh, you want to leave an impact, because I know I do, with the people watching this video, you can join us live in Philadelphia. It's always sunny at What Culture, and fingers crossed it'll be sunny on April 7th in Philadelphia. If it's not, get inside at midday. There's food, there's drink, there's us. More importantly, there's Simon Miller, the one that we actually know you want to see. It kicks off at 12 o'clock, yeah, giving us, uh, giving you plenty of time to get across to WrestleMania because we're going to be getting across there too. Uh, tickets are still available at whatculture.com forward slash tickets. The VIP ones have gone. There are still general sale tickets available. I once met a wrestler who will go unnamed, and he did say it's Miller here. <laughs> <laughs> we get that a lot. We get that a lot. And that's all right in the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he will He's be. an awesome guy as well. Cannot resent him. He's genuinely IRL great. He is the best. Get your tickets now at whatculture.com forward slash tickets. We'll go to uh, X Twitter for some of your questions this morning on a Friday. We're going to start, and I knew this because me and Sidra did the news today. I've got another question from Colton, the OG, the Dadly OG, finding us when we could barely be found on the internet. And, uh, and he's coming in with the, uh, the heavy issue questions as well, Sidra, at DAM Colton, asking, Mountain Dew Code Red or Mountain Dew Pitch Black? It's Pitch Black for me. Pitch Black was like, you never forget your first time. And I think uh, <laughs> other than like maybe the original flavor, Pitch Black, like, I didn't realize that Mountain Dew had this like incredible range, like this rotating cast. It's basically the AEW roster <laughs> of, of carbonated drinks. It is. it is, it's just some good disappear, some come back. There's probably too many to sample, even though he's trying his level um, best to do precisely do that. On. And Mountain Dew Pitch Black, um, not only is it great, I love it so much, right, that I have attempted and maybe halfway succeeded with trying to find the secret flavor combinations using an assortment of, um, <laughs> own brand supermarket carbonated beverages. So I've worked out that I think it was like a, it was like a grape, obviously. And I think it was like a, a blue lemonade, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I put them together and it, it was purple and it tasted a tiny bit like it. It's quite it. good. Well, it was quite bad. good, you know, it wasn't too bad. Thank you, Aldi. I, uh, I, am a, I am a code red guy, but to Sidge's point, yeah, the, um, the range is worth exploring. And uh, this recent Baja Blast, Taco Bell collaboration on ice You're cream obsessed and with pie. It. It's, it's blowing my mind. I think a lot of people, if they are like foodies, they really enjoy their food. Like they are the holy grail for them. So I want to go to a Michelin star restaurant. This man would genuinely rather have a Baja Blast. Baja Beach. Blast, that is, yeah. Baja, Baja Blast, Beach was yeah. a nightclub in Newcastle once upon a time. It was good. Baja it was Blast. Grim, but it was good. <laughs> Baja Blast in a cake? Would you rather have that or like a. 300 pound Michelin full tasting menu with wine accompaniment. Pop in a cake. All day long. Crisps inside the chocolate, pop inside the cake. Uh, we'll do uh, <laughs> We'll do a bit of serious wrestling content next. Um, we've got a question from Austin at Austin75173564. Um, good morning, studs. You must have known we were both on again. Uh, with AEW I'm all in. I'm talking about Will Bourne and uh, Murray. Yeah, you probably did expect that. 
With AEW All In oh, coming Phil. sooner rather than later, here you go, Sitch. What would you book for these matches at All In? Potentially we could be there again. AEW World, AEW Women's, AEW Tag, and one Dream Match. Have a great Friday. You too, Austin. AEW Women's, I don't want to do that thing because I think so many of uh, the talents in this women's division have done like a really exceptional job of this quiet, uh, quiet rebuild, I would call it, this tentative rebuild, but I would put Mercedes Money versus Jamie Hayer. Like that's yep. genuinely, considering how awesome Mercedes Money is and looking like she's getting blown away, how slippery she is when she's trying to apply submissions and how scrappy she can be. Money versus Hater, I think, is the perfect dynamic. So that would be my women's title match. Mm -hmm. What are the other ones? World? Uh, World, Tag and Dream match. Oh, right, okay. The thing about the Dream match is that they've done virtually everything. If you think about all the permutations, they've done virtually everything except Danielson Osprey. So okay. that's the one that I'd want to be there for the first time they yeah. wrestle. So that would be the dream match. World or, oh, I don't know. I think, right. Omega and Okada are going to wrestle again. They will never, they just, I just can't see them beating Dominion. 2018. No. I, I just kind of, they're not where they were physically. They're obviously like sharper mentally than they ever were physically. They're both geniuses in there, but it would be a lot of getting used to. I think that could really benefit from the stadium backdrop. Genuinely, I think it would need something. I think it'd be enough of a novelty to see them in the ring again. That could help the interest level, but in terms of really sort of trying to live up to the incredible legacy that they've set, I think getting as many people to watch it yeah, would be the way to do that. And a tag, which has suddenly become interesting again in AW. It has, right. Um, oh. To be honest, right, my actual... Say that the real Forbidden Door got broken down and WWE and AEW collaborated um, on a show. My, honestly, one of the first matches I would put on there would be the Young Bucks versus the Wolf Dogs. The Wolf Dogs, if you don't watch NXT, and not many do, I don't think, the Wolf Dogs of... Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker are an absolute delight to watch in the ring and particularly out of it. Um, specifically for All In, I don't want to see Young Bucks FTR again. Mm. And it's weird because they haven't really done it that often. I just think that there's, we don't like this sort of intricate, passive aggressive, elaborate work that I think is at play. I'm just getting I'm just bored of it. I'd just rather a good fictional story. And the Young Bucks, you know what I'd like to see? because I saw it at New Year's Dash last year mm -hmm. and it made me feel alive. I, I, I called them the seven all-stars, and I, Omega can do double duty, so can Okada. The seven all-stars mm -hmm. of Omega and Okada who joined forces in last year's New Year's Dash versus the Young Bucks. Oh, yeah, I'll be into it. We've got one last question for you, and it's mentioned in Philadelphia, Sidge. Uh, we've got a question in from a uh, vacant manager at the One Raven 17. I think that might be a clue about who a uh, vacant manager would like. What are the odds of an ECW sighting during night one or night two of WrestleMania? Oh, well, it's in Philly. Yeah. They're all getting work. I'm hoping to attend a, a show at the ECW Arena featuring some of the legends. Shane Douglas. Ha ha ha. Dick Et Flair. Al. <laughs> but there's some that uh, we, we assume, I guess, are still in WWE's good books and could be Hall of Fame. Links. Indeed, you know. we know for a fact that RVD can still go. He can still go. He can still go. Uh, we know that there are. He's working speed on my Bailey that weekend. Is he? It's going to be good. That'd be good. Uh, we know that there are two wrestlers who are still active who wouldn't turn down a WWE payday <coughs> no, at they all. Not. And I think you know. I think you know <laughs> the guys. For me, I just love Tajiri. Yeah. Uh, well, you know when you're like you're younger and you don't really get how it works and. You conflate your favorite wrestler who is good in the ring with like megastar charisma. Um, Tajiri was that guy for me. When he rocked up in 2001, I was like, give him the belt. <laughs> I mean, I probably shouldn't have had it. I mean, he's great, but he's not that great. But I was like, give him the belt. So Tajiri's my, one of my favorite nostalgia acts. So Tajiri for me. Nothing wrong in like an Andre the Giant Battle Royal cameo as well. Oh, no, no. If the tanker can appear out nowhere out there. Tajiri you can, certainly you can. You can helicopter into me, CW <laughs> Legends. Uh, we're going to end with a picture which hopefully we'll be able to flash up on the screen. I'll show you stitches from uh, Dobby, the Scottish Yorkshireman. Can we give my friend's nephew a shout out? Absolutely, because your friend's nephew has dressed as Rikishi. And yeah. it's absolutely good. Cool. It's I mean, a class the, the commitment to that is unbelievable. Like, I get roped into doing Halloween stuff uh, with the kids now that I'm a father, and I just go minimal effort. I've got a pair of prescription. 
um, aviators. <laughs> so I wore that with a white t-shirt and a denim jacket to be Orange Cassidy a couple of years ago. Um, I like a tropical shirt during the summer, so I wore that with like a suit with the glasses again bit of flour on the lapel and I was Tony Montana last year. Perfect. So basically I just use existing wardrobe <laughs> items to make a minimal effort so I see something like that and I just think that's what commitment. That's shoe gear getting made. Yeah we'll get that on screen if we can uh, have a great weekend. Uh, thanks for joining us today and we, oh there's a video there potentially if it gets edited in I believe and we will see you soon.